everybody and welcome back to another episode of Ball Rocket Gaming Modded Minecraft. I'm here once again with my ever so astute companion, Tox. <laughs> now that I've learned what this means. <laughs> it's a good thing, it's a good thing. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? I'm oh, doing pretty good, not too bad. Uh, we got our wonderful little system running here. Uh, so this is actually a kind of a follow-up to our little forestry uh, escapades. Um... If you watched the last couple of episodes, you could see the the evolution here of what our plan, grand plans were, and what, <laughs> now you can see what realistically came out of it. Um, it's even changed a little more since our last episode. So I wanted to do a little kind of a follow up. The focus of this is going to be uh, showing what we've changed because there are some major changes to fix some issues, and also we wanted to kind of call this a, a tech timeout, if you will. Um, we didn't really explain a lot of the the technical detail of what we laid out here. Um, so I wanted to do that a little more formally. So what we've done is we actually opened everything up and uh, it pulled back the skirt, pulled back the kimono, if you will. Um, so I'm going to walk through, I want to kind of walk you through exactly what we've done here. So uh, for, the, for those of you following along at home from the last episode, uh, we had one train, it was our forestry train coming in, and it was basically a one-shot, take-care-of-everything train. So it had the ability to drop off fertilizer, drop off power, pick up wood, pick up the sludge, and run it back out. Uh, that ended up becoming a problem just because it was a lot more complication than it was worth to figure out how to get it to pick up fertilizer when it needed it and not when it didn't. So eventually what happened is the train would come with a full uh, chest of fertilizer, couldn't drop any of it off because it was full here, and then wouldn't pick up any wood because the chest was full of fertilizer and just infinite loop do nothing. So... And on top long, of that, fertilizer was flying out of here. Yeah, fertilizer was going everywhere. Um, so long story short, what we ended up doing, we ended up uh, going ahead and splitting the line, and we actually added a second train. So now we've got our Black Black service train, which is, uh, uh, we come, I'm sure, coming back here sometime soon. And it actually takes a second uh, uh, runoff track right here. So we still have our original, what I call the harvest train, which is going through, and all it does is it just picks up wood. That is it. The secondary train, our service train, comes in, and it takes care of dropping off the fertilizer, picking up, or dropping off power, and picking up the sludge. So, that's the first major change. We'll talk about that a little more, um, some other logistics that came up as a result of that. But the actual system itself here. Now, one of the decisions uh, me, Yankee, and, and Tox made is we decided we're going to go ahead and do something a little different for Forestry Town. We, we've played with AE for a store system. It's a great system. I love it to death. I wouldn't trade it for the world. But we want to do something different. So what we've decided to do is we're actually going to go ahead and do logistics pipes for Forestry. That's all of Forestry. It's for out here at the main base, everything. So this is going to be a logistics pipe dependent system. This is just fun for us. It's something new we've never really played with. So it gives us a chance to uh, play something new and getting used to it. So just a real quick run through here. Uh, when, the, when the service train comes in, it's going to drop off fertilizer in this unloader here. And under the unloader here, we've got uh, what we call a chassis pipe. Now, a chassis pipe is just a basically a chassis. It's got nothing to it. But when you open it up, it's got multiple slots depending on what version you have. This is a Mark V. You can have more slots to hire the number. And then from there, you can actually put in these cards, and these cards tell you what the pipes do. In this particular case, I have an extractor. And all, all that basically means is when this pipe's hooked up to something, pull stuff out of it. So this guy unloads the cart, this guy pulls that stuff out of there, and runs down this pipe. Now with logistics pipes, the way logistics pipes work, they work in conjunction with Billcraft. You can see all the gold pipes we have here. But logistics pipes are intelligent pipes. So with these pipe systems, they can actually route and figure out where things are going. So in this particular case, as soon as the, the items hit that first logistics pipe right there, that chassis pipe, it is linked to the rest of the system. And it knows that over here, we've got a chest that's dedicated to fertilizer. And that means this little guy right here, which is a logistics pipe, it knows that it wants to have all the fertilizer come here. The reason for that is, in this particular case, is we've got this guy requesting for lighters specifically. So that's the kind of concept behind logistics pipes. Now there's a couple of other pipes we're using here. Uh, first and foremost is we actually have uh, our harvesting system here. And in this harvesting system, we've got uh, right up here, our supplier pipe. And the supplier pipe, you tell how much you want uh, to have in whatever inventory is touching, 
and it'll constantly feed that in there. And that supplier pipe will pull from a provider pipe. And in this particular case, what we have over here, and actually I kind of lie a little bit, there's actually two pipes on here. The second one's a provider pipe. And we're telling this pipe, this is what you have to offer. If anybody asks, give it to them. So very simple concept here. Now, a little bit of logistics in this is very simple. One, and first and foremost, we've revised how the system works. So that instead of it being dependent on the area being loaded for the system to run, we now have a train sensor or a locomotive uh, uh, train detector, which tells us when the train is here. Once the train shows up, this red pipe wire lights up and turns on that harvester over there, and the harvester starts running and cutting down the train, filling the train up. When the train leaves, it turns off. The other little bit of logistics we have is when our chest of fertilizer is full, it disables this pipe through this blue pipe wire system. These are done through gates. I'll talk about gates in a different episode, hopefully, uh, when we start getting a little more technical into this. But long story short, it is simply a, a, a simple, easy way to get everything done here. And as I said before, um, we also have uh, sludge pouring out from those machines. And we actually utilize getting rid of the sludge through these same exact pipes. They're not liquid pipes. The advantage of these logistics pipes is they actually have liquid basic pipes. This pipe and the one at the other end that's connected to the machine that causes sludge is actually encapsulating that uh, liquid in a, uh, a container and then sending it over to here and then it fills up our little tank and when the uh, liquid loader comes or the uh, liquid cart comes by it'll unload that from there so pretty straightforward system pretty easy going we've cut the loop short just to go right in here we do have plans to completely revamp the system into a nicer looking system we may talk about that a little bit more later this is in the future <laughs> but this is this whole system right here we built out was just a first shot at learning logistics so that's the fundamentals of how this system works. Now, as I said, because of this, we have to run two trains on the same line. And because of that, we've run into some new challenges. Sorry, I was watching uh, Wood go back and forth here. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, as, we've, uh, as we did in the line going across the bridge, uh, we have now blocked the whole... Uh, section the whole track back to town from here. And uh, blocking so means what? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just about to explain it. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, um, each of these uh, lines of track, straight stretch of track. We have set those as blocks with uh, block relays, um, so that when a train is coming this way, which maybe a train will come soon, but I don't see it. If there's already a train in this stretch attack, this receiver here will uh, turn that holding track off, and I probably shouldn't stand on the track, um, and wait until that track is clear. That way, in case one train is moving Oop, faster than the other. Somebody's coming. I saw the uh, one you're staying on turn red. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's coming, all right. Um, Sometimes the train will move faster than, than another train, and we don't want the train in the back to move. If it's moving faster, we don't want it to rear end the train in front. So, uh, this is no piggy! No! Run, Porker! Run! Oh! And he's dead. That's some flat bacon. That's some flat bacon. <laughs> so, you notice the uh, holding track right here just turned off because if another oh, train yeah. came right now, it would actually hold that train here until the other train clears this section. There it goes. Which it now has. Um, now, as Work was saying, we did uh, have some complications with that. Um, you notice there's an admin anchor here that uh, Warped actually put those all along a whole whole piece of track here. Um, we have some uh, problems with some of the chunks in this map, it seems. And uh, since it's not loading properly, um, these were not able to... The relays were not uh, connecting to the relays on the other side of the blocks very well. And... Uh, Trains were constantly stopping at a track because it couldn't tell that the block was clear. And it would stay there forever until somebody else wandered over and loaded those chunks properly. Yep. And it's kind of a strange thing because the trains themselves have chunk loaders on them. But for whatever reason, that wasn't getting the chunks to wake up or because of the fact that the chunks were too, the blocks were too long, the trains couldn't load those chunks. And it was just causing all kinds of grief and turmoil. 
Oh, and yeah. uh, just just so you guys know, to give you an idea, when we talk about a block, as Tox has mentioned, you know, this is a short little section right here. This runs down to that end. But some of the blocks, to give you an example here, going backwards, you've got this little signal right here. This is a block, uh, a block signal. So connecting this to one of those ones that Tox is standing on, this is one end of one block. The other end, we. I have a boost now too. Still going, still going. Yeah, this is definitely one for longer sessions. <sighs> there we go. To this guy right here. So that entire stretch of track, all the way back, is one monitored section or a block, as Tox noted. So yeah, if there's a bad chunk, just one bad chunk, that means of this grid here, if any one of these little grids right here doesn't load properly uh, for this track line to do a checksum, uh, you're bombed. Anchor zombie. So. And keep in mind that the the admin anchors that we put on the trains um, only load a 9x9 nine nine chunk centered around the cart itself. So if it's stopped over there, it can only load that chunk that it's in, the next chunk, which would be this one, I think. So anything from here to the block signal is bad. Yeah, now I'm not I'm not a coder and I do not know the details of how um Realcraft has everything coded for the block signals. I know you can run them very long distances and they should work fine. You shouldn't have to have uh the sections all loaded, uh chunk loaded just to get them to work. Um but to that point, like I said, we're having some problems that select parts of the tracks would not work and others would. So and long story short uh, there are some long strips of track that are, in fact, uh, uh, chunk-loaded, and uh, it's just because of faults in the server load or something that's causing problems. And instead of going through and trying to troubleshoot and correct and fix the server aspect, it was just a lot easier for us to just go ahead and throw some admin anchors in and be a little cheaty, unfortunately. <laughs> but it got the job done. This is one of those times where if it comes up to a point where uh, it's an issue with the server kind of a thing as opposed to the limitation of the game we're going to cheat uh, am an anchor and help out and it's not ideal but <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> the it, first time we saw this it was actually uh, this chunk here um, and it was a long, long strip of chunk that wasn't loading uh, those of you who watch my channel uh, you may remember my episode um, what did I call that I think it broke the map yeah uh, that's the kind of chunk error that was showing up like you could see the walls of the edge of the next chunk like that's just wrong. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah. But anyways, this this we we've walked the whole track now, so you can see the whole line going up and down here. Um, we kind of talked about it before, but just as a review, we do have that intersection up here and the intersection set up so that uh, Rourke's train doesn't uh, impact the other ones and everybody takes turns like they're supposed to. And again, we had to do the blocking for our entire line because we've got two trains on that line. So once you hit this line right here, you have three trains coming in. So when it gets to this point here, because we have a specialized train that's loading up on stuff for a minecart, as opposed to some train that's unloading for a minecart, we've had to change things up a little bit. So we've got a primary line here that comes off. This is for the service train. It's got a couple of uh, fuel unloader, or sorry, look, uh, sludge uh, unloaders basically, and then it refuels or refills on fertilizer, refills on power. And the heads on around to top off the locomotives for the head back out. And then likewise, you've got uh, the two lines here for Rourke's train and for Forestry's harvest train. Uh, unloaders, we kind of updated them so they unload faster and then power to refill power for Rourke's train. It, this is a hodgepodge, and this is the evolution of... You told me not to stand here. <laughs> this is the evolution of uh, you know many iterations to get things working. Yeah, there, there's, there's a... Uh, we're trying to... Uh, test uh, running off the sludge into a sludge boiler. Those can the sludge boiler can produce uh, basically boil sludge down into I think like dirt and clay and other random things. So we're trying that out because that little tank over there already filled up with sludge. Yeah. So and we can I can see it's already going down again. So that's uh, obviously keeping up pretty good. Uh, hello, force train. Yeah. Hello. Ooh. <laughs> that's, that stuff hits so hard even I get hit. So, like I said, guys, that's that's uh, 
that is pretty much uh, the long and short of the updates we've done. Again, I want to give you a little more of a technical peek into what we're doing. Uh, Logistics-wise, I said we're going to be using logistics pipes only at Forgetown. No AE at all. So that's going to be a lot of fun to work with. And again, it's just a new thing to play with. Um, AE was first built as a companion to logistics pipes. They're meant to kind of be married together and work together, which they do. They work very well together, from what I understand. But I've never had a chance to actually play with logistics pipes, and I feel like the best way to really get familiar with a new mod like that, well, I say new, new to me, is simply because uh, by actually using it and using it solely. I love AE to death, like I said, but it is way too easy to lean heavily on it and not utilize everything about it or learn limitations and learn how to get around them. So that's what we're kind of doing with that. Now, uh, this is all going to change eventually over time. We're going to start moving oh, things yeah. out. We're going to actually uh, have uh, high power lines coming out over the bay. And we're going to have a substation out here. And that's where we're going to take uh, ultra high voltage from there. We're going to step it down to a high voltage situation. And then we can feed all the uh, uh, places over here. We'll have power lines going the other direction into the main city. And have another substation out there. So we'll have multiple substations for each area, if you will. So we'll have a little substation down here. Where we're going to have our uh, our sludge and sewage treatment center down here next door to our water purification plant. <laughs> Just for a little fun. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, like I said, for forestry itself, we're going to be uh, revamping that whole, uh, that whole layout. So that instead of having a three by three chunk for every single type of tree. We're going to have a single chunk for um, a like group a of trees. So like for all the vanilla trees and the rubber trees, we'll have one station. So we'll have like a, basically a chunk, you know, a single loaded chunk that's going to have the station. And then that way we can have all these areas around because of those chunk loaders and the uh, mine, uh, mine carts are going to be all loaded. So the trains will stop right here. They'll load the surrounding area. And then depending on which line the trains pull in on, you'll be able to say, okay, if it pulls out in line one, that's oak. Run the oak harvester and fill it up. If it comes in on line two, that's spruce and so on. So that gives you an idea of what we're going to be looking into. Um, that said, uh, I'm not sure we're going to get back to forestry right now. We're just trying to get something that's functional. I may have to do a little tweaking here and there. But the idea is to make that system keep up with those boilers for both the uh, liquid fuel as well as the solid fuel being charcoal and be able to get us off of Yankee's house so that he can actually pack up and move himself to wherever he wants to go. We're not dependent on him or dependent on a little cheaty thing. I know some people may have noticed, but we still have one piece of teleportation in our world, which is a Tesseract, which is piping oh, the liquid is. from his place over to here. So this is supposed to be a non-teleportation server we made that decision right before we released from beta. And so this was all pre-beta. You know, power plant is one of the first things I put into this world to help get us up and running. So we're going to work our best to <laughs> try to get away from that. Anyways, guys, um, that's all we have time for today. Uh, we do have a lot more stuff coming up, a lot more projects coming up. And, uh, uh, you know, if Tox is willing and has the time, I'd love to do a lot more work with him. I've been having a lot of fun uh, doing projects. And, uh, and and whatnot. I'm um, hoping we can uh, get Rurark on with us sometime. If you have not watched the uh, Bug Bomb episode yet, I highly encourage it. It's a funny little uh, prank we pulled on Rurark. And uh, in that video, I have an annotation to link directly to his response. Uh, what, hap what happened when he logged in? Uh, <laughs> it, it, I, I tell you, I could, I could not have planned that better. Uh, <laughs> apparently, he logged out in his house, and uh, let's just put it this does. way: he doesn't like bugs, apparently. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, folks, uh, as always, we certainly do appreciate it. And if you'd like to leave a comment down below, please do right down there. Just you know. Right there, just yeah, right there. Fill that, yeah, right there. And then while you're at it, just over a little bit, right, right there's a little like button. Just go ahead and tap that like button for us. I really appreciate it. He talks really appreciates. We really appreciate it so much so that we like to say thank you very much in advance. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Just because, well, who wants to miss an episode of talks fumbling around with uh, technology and redstone and falling off roofs without my jetpack? That was that was that was talented. That was very talented. <laughs> Kids, hey, you me. don't. 
don't 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 jump off close with no jetpack on. You have no proof of that, sir. Yeah, I know. I didn't push him. <laughs> he fell. Anyways, Rurik, man, this is Tate. I don't trust oh, Rurik. He's biased. Okay, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, I've said, oh, I've said this many times before, right but uh, please do feel free to go to the Ball Rocket Gaming website and uh, get yourself signed up on the website. Leave a post, a comment. It's a great way to conversate with all of us BRGers and uh, go back and forth about stuff. Um, likewise, I really, 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 really do encourage that if you are interested in modded Minecraft and you have an interest in this server, you are certainly more than welcome to stop by the Ball Rocket Gaming forums and submit an application to join us on the server. Um, again, a lot of us do happen to do YouTubing. It's not a requirement. It is not an obligation. There is no minimums in, in, in that term. You are welcome to come join us and hang out. Go ahead and fill out the application. We'll get a chance to talk with you. We'll make sure that you're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for you. And hopefully the thing will work out well and we'll see you on here. So that's it for now. I'm Jester. I'm Toxic. And we are the BFG out of here. <laughs> sure. Have a good life. <laughs> Bye!